Welcome to our panel on social impact through markets. Uh, in the old world, the traditional division of labor uh, told us that markets work pretty well to uh, deliver value for the top of the, for, for the, top of the pyramid, the uh, uh, higher classes and the mid um, massive markets of, of, of the uh, middle classes. The needs of the poor, though, were a completely different ballgame. Those were say, uh, served by in a, the non-market domain. That is, those were the territory of sub subsidies, of public policy, of philanthropy, and economic development. Of course, the BOP agenda blasted that difference and was, premise, was based on the premise that uh, actually markets can deliver value to the most poor elements of society. That basic premise is still put into question by some skeptics even today. So I think we have a great panel to uh, explore that idea and think, and I think their experiences will tell us uh, a good deal about um, how far we've gone in making that uh, uh, promise a reality. Uh, the panel, I think it's diverse. It's formed by uh, three outstanding individuals coming from different backgrounds a young and energetic startup uh, in the industry of medical supplies, and two more established companies in the fields of agro-business and financial, financial services. Uh, the rules of engagements are simple enough. I'll start uh, reading a brief bio of each of the speakers before I uh, give, uh, pass on the word to them. I was asked to enforce the 15-minute limits uh, strictly, so I'll uh, signal when, it's, uh, when you're about to run out of time and then uh, we'll go into the Q&A space. I ask you all to uh, start preparing your questions as the speakers go along so that we minimize the transaction cost when we move on to the uh, question uh, portion of the, of the panel. Anyways, uh, let's start by Jane. Jane has a background that includes a blend of business and social sector experience. She previously worked with nonprofit organizations on healthcare issues in developing, developing countries. She spent several years as program director of a startup uh, working with AIDS in China and worked for the Clinton's Foundation AIDS Initiative in Tanzania. She also worked at Monitor Group as management consulting advising Fortune 500 companies. Jane, the floor is yours. It's a great honor to be here today. Um, I will be talking about Embrace, an organization I founded. It's a social enterprise that aims to provide a line of affordable healthcare technologies to people in emerging markets. Uh, to start, I'd like to show a short one minute video that highlights the work that we're doing. As I watch my child sleep, I feel a sense of inner peace. I will do everything to protect him, and I want to always be there to give him unconditional love. Every day, he teaches me something new, and together, we share many special moments. But the day my child was born, the only thing I wanted was to help her live. problems these babies face is staying warm. This is the primary function of an incubator, but traditional incubators cost thousands of dollars and require a constant supply of electricity. As a result, parents in rural areas resort to desperate measures to care for their babies, including tying hot water bottles around the babies, placing them under light bulbs, or holding them over hot coals. The Embrace Infant Warmer is a simple solution to this problem. Embrace consists of three parts, a sleeping bag, a heater, and a pouch of phase change material. Once heated, the phase change material is placed into a compartment in the sleeping bag and can maintain a constant temperature of 37 degrees Celsius or 98 degrees Fahrenheit over the next four to six hours. The product stays warm without electricity. It is safe and intuitive to use, easy to clean, portable, and allows close mother-to-child interaction. Embrace's mission is to give every infant a chance for a healthy life. Every child deserves the opportunity to live, to grow, to dream. 
please support us. So the mission of Embrace is to give all infants an equal chance for a healthy life through this low-cost infant warmer that we've developed. The long-term vision is to empower the disadvantaged to improve their lives through disruptive technologies. So beyond this product, we hope to leverage everything we learn about distribution, design, manufacturing to come up with a whole line of affordable healthcare technologies for emerging markets. Uh, how Embrace started, so it came out of a class I did while I was in business school at Stanford, graduated in 2008, and while I was there, I took a course called uh, Design for Extreme Affordability, which is half engineers, half MBAs, who come together to develop affordable technologies for people living on less than a dollar a day. The challenge posed to us in the class was develop a baby incubator that costs less than 1% of the cost of a traditional incubator, which is $20,000 in the US. So I teamed up with this amazing group of engineers, including an aerospace engineer, a PhD, um, an electrical engineering, master's in computer science, and this is what we've been working on now for the last four years. So a little bit more about the background of the problem. As you saw in the video, about 20 million low birth weight and premature babies are born every year around the world. Four million babies die in the first 28 days of their lives. That's 450 babies every hour. And one of the biggest problems they face is simply staying warm because they're so tiny they don't have enough body fat to regulate their own temperature. And as a result, many either die or they grow up with severe long-term health problems because so much of their bodily functions are going towards staying warm that their hearts don't develop normally, their lungs don't develop normally. So the most traditional solution to this problem is an incubator, but incubators are not only expensive, they require a constant supply of electricity. Uh, so you're not going to find them in rural areas where most of these babies are dying. And as a result, what you see are really unsafe local solutions like people putting light bulbs over the babies. But in every clinic I've been to, you hear stories of light bulbs shattering over these babies because of problems with the circuits. Um, parents tie hot water bottles around their babies' bodies or simply place them over hot coals. So I'd like to share this short video of this woman, Sujata, who lives about two hours outside of Bangalore in a small village, um, and she lost three of her babies. Oops. ಅನ್ನ <laughs> ಅದೆರಡು <laughs> after Sujata told us her story, about eight women from that village came forward, and they all had the same story. Each of them had lost one or two babies. Uh, and sadly, that's the situation we hear every time we go into a village in India. Through doing this research, what we came to quickly realize was what was needed was not just a lower cost version of what exists today, but something that functions entirely differently, something that works without a constant supply of electricity, that's easy enough for a mother or midwife to use given that so many births take place in the home, something that's portable, has no moving parts. So what we developed 
Looks like a small sleeping bag for an infant. It's made of completely waterproof materials, so you can reuse it over and over between multiple infants. But the core technology is this. So this is a pouch of what's called a phase change material. It's a wax-like substance that melts at human body temperature at 98 degrees Fahrenheit. You can melt this in two ways. One is by using boiling water. The other way for clinics that have intermittent access to electricity, we have a small electric heater. But the key is once it melts, it maintains the exact same temperature for four to six hours, after which you just reheat it. And you place it into this little pocket in the back of the sleeping bag, and it creates a nice, warm micro environment for the infant. So a very simple, easy solution for these villages. And that's how it looks. So it looks like a simple product, but it's actually gone through hundreds of iterations at this point. We've traveled the length of breadth of India, interviewing mothers, doctors, midwives, nurses, trying to understand how to make this truly locally appropriate. And I think that's one of the most important aspects of effectively bringing solutions to the bottom of the pyramid, making sure that they are suitable for these areas. So I'll just give you one example of the, of the many iterations and findings. Uh, we have a temperature indicator on the wax pouch that indicates when you need to, to reheat it. And initially, it was a numeric scale. But as we went into villages, uh, mothers would say to us, we don't trust Western medicine. So if a doctor gives a cer certain dosage of medicine for my baby, I'll cut it in half because it's just too strong. So if you told me to keep this at 37 degrees Celsius, I'd keep it at a little less than that. That's, that's too warm for my baby. And as a result, what we moved to <clears throat> was a happy face, frowning face design, a, a binary option as opposed to a numeric scale. So something we would have never thought of you know, sitting in California and why we have said it's imperative for the full team to, to be in India to really understand the, the culture there. In terms of customers and distribution channels, so we're planning to sell this to clinics. Um, to small clinics throughout India. And we're working with GE Healthcare, their global distributors for Embrace. We're also working with Novartis, with the Arogya Parvar arm, and I've seen firsthand how amazing the work they are doing is. Um, they target specifically tier three and, and below towns, and we've just started a market pilot with them in the state of Karnataka. Um, not only are we selling, but we're also doing a rental model. So we're exploring different models within this space that so we can reach all segments of, of the population and all income levels. Um, we plan to sell through governments. So the government of India runs hundreds of thousands of clinics throughout the country um, and is also training uh, throughout over 100,000 ASHA workers. So these are community healthcare workers who go into the home to provide newborn care. Our hope is that each of these women can be equipped with the Embrace device. And lastly, we're working with NGOs. Um, we're starting a, a pilot with Population Services International. Um, we'll soon be working with Doctors Without Borders as well as other local NGOs. So within this, we're trying to innovate not only around the product, but around business models and combining both traditional medical device distribution channel, a pharmaceutical one, as well as NGOs. Uh, our product launch for this first version of our product was uh, in April of this year, and this is a snapshot of the types of clinics we've been helping. So the idea is to first start in Bangalore and the surrounding areas, gain traction among the key opinion leaders there, build up our brand awareness, and then go further and further into remote areas. And I'll just share just a few of the stories of the babies we've been helping with this product so far. So this is in a government hospital in Karnataka. Um, this woman is a day laborer. Her husband is a carpenter. They lost two of their babies before this baby was born. They gave birth to a two and a half pound baby. And luckily this hospital had just installed the Embrace device. So they kept her in this for about 20 days. At that point she had gained weight and was able to go home with her mother. This is a baby of a woman named Chetna who uh, was in a very bad accident who so gave birth two months prematurely, again, to a two and a half pound baby. Um, because this was a baby girl, they weren't willing to do much to, to pay for her care. If it were a baby boy, they would have sold the house. So they left her at this small clinic um, in Shimoga, about six hours outside of Bangalore. And again, they had just installed the device, so put her in this for two and a half weeks, and by that time, she was gaining weight and was able to go home with her parents. Um, this is Lakshma and her husband. They're day laborers. This is a tribal area in Karnataka. Um, and they actually have a, a neonatal intensive care unit 
but it cost $5 a day to keep the baby in that unit. Her and her husband make about $4 a week, so it's just not practical for them. With Embrace, what they're able to do is shift the baby to the maternity ward, where it costs about a dollar a day, and now it's an economically viable solution for these parents. And I'll just go over this last story. This is the most remarkable case of a 1.8 pound baby that was born in this hospital. The doctor said to us, without Embrace, they would have just let this baby die. They didn't think there was any chance he was gonna live. They put the baby in our device, and about two weeks later, um, I went to visit, and he was still alive, and still fighting for his life. So it's been wonderful to see these stories of how we've been able to make impact so far. Beyond just saving lives, the long-term impact we're trying to have here is a reduction in population growth. Turns out, as infant mortality goes down, your population sizes also decrease because parents don't anticipate their kids are gonna die, so they start having fewer and fewer children. And you see this within a single generation. So this is a quick snapshot of our progress to date and where we're going from here. Um, the last three years have really been about conducting needs assessment, iterating the product, conducting all of our clinical trials, and bringing this product to market. Um, what we're trying to do, as I said, is build an infrastructure by which we can develop other technologies. So we've just uh, passed our International Standards Organization audit. We'll be applying for our um, international regulatory approvals this year and next year. And the other thing we're in the process of doing is creating a new organizational structure by which Embrace can be financially sustainable. Um, and we're calling that a hybrid structure. We're spinning out a for-profit arm. So we'll have a for-profit and a non-profit that sit side by side. And the way that's going to work is the non-profit will hold the intellectual property for the baby warmer, continue to take donations, continue to take philanthropic capital to provide free warmers to the neediest areas, to the places that just cannot pay for them. It will also provide education alongside the technology. So beyond temperature regulation, educating parents on breastfeeding, nutrition, all the things that affect infant mortality. And lastly, the nonprofit will be doing uh, monitoring and evaluation. The for-profit, then, will be doing all of the capital-intensive manufacturing, distribution, and then future research and development for new products. And the two will be linked through the for-profit paying a royalty to the nonprofit, as well as the nonprofit taking some equity in the for-profit. So the impetus behind doing this was really to leverage both private capital and philanthropic capital so we could reach our goals of A, uh, scaling this product globally, and B, coming up with a whole line of affordable technologies, as I said, for these communities. So thank you, and if there's any questions, please continue.